I was working on this background for the sea turtle. I'm just about to start painting. Well, nearly. <laughs> Getting there. I'm trying to work out this background, as you can see. I'm trying to work out what it's going to be like up inside the water. Now, I've got a reference photograph, obviously, I'm going off here. So one by Marcelo Rabosi from Pixabay. And, and it's a lovely photograph, I must admit. And you can see there's a lot of marks within the water here, but they're soft, aren't they? They're very soft. So what I'm doing, I'm alternating between my homemade lifting off brush. I do a video on making something like this. I'll pop the link in the top corner for you. Give you some ideas how I go about doing that. And I'm using that for the ones lower down, the more in the foreground, really. Because this is a stiff bristle brush, quite a wobbly stiff bristle brush, one of my cheaper cheeps. But they're really good. <laughs> Don't knock cheaper cheap brushes. And the stiffer the bristles, the more paint it will remove. It will. And I know that some paint is staining, so some paint will not move whatsoever, no matter how hard you try. And this also depends on the quality of the paper you've got as well. Because sometimes the cheaper quality papers, you find if you try to remove too much paint, you'll start to rip all the paper. And the paper will just ripple up and you get bits of paper everywhere. So this is 100% cotton paper I'm doing this with. So this is one, this is the, say the harder bristle brush, which is probably more for acrylic and oil painting really. Which are just, as I say, squish with a pair of pliers. And the other one is a very old Cotsman or Windsor Newton Cotman brush. No tip left on it, as you can see. This one I used to mix my paints with. And I can use that for a softer approach. Because when you get towards a middle distance, these marks get a little bit softer, they start to fade away the further they go towards the background. And because of that, you want those marks to be smaller and softer and also spaced apart a little bit more as well, so fewer marks. When you're thinking about perspective, that sort of thing. And that's all I'm doing here. By varying the two brushes I've got here, and you can use whatever brushes you want really. I wouldn't use any new brushes, any decent brushes for doing this technique with, because you just ruin them. Because all you're doing is rubbing the very tip onto the watercolour surface to remove some paint. So make sure you save your old brushes because you can do things like this with those old brushes as well as applying masking fluid and all that sort of thing. I've got a video on using masking fluid as well if you're interested. But when you work your way back down again, just get some of this area up here, past all my splatter marks, but quite a lot of fun doing some splattering with this paint, as you can see. Then you want to switch back to your stiffer bristle brush for more defined, not quite defined, but semi-defined details around the foreground, really. These are not really defined, as in really sharp, because remember, we are looking through water, or we appear to be looking through water. <laughs> also, though, the size of those marks as well. That is very, very important, because you want to also think about that perspective once again. But also, you don't want it looking too uniform. These are all too uniform, the ones around here. So we'll vary those now by putting tiny, tiny marks in between and making some of these slightly bigger and so on and so on. Now, I've done this in two layers, this particular background. Sometimes I do backgrounds in one hit, as in wet and wet. Nice wet and wet sort of blurry background. Again, I've got videos on that for you. But this particular one, I decided to do a little bit different. I've done a gradiated wash from the top to bottom. A variety of blues, that's these two blues here as you can see. And then all I've done is just a little bit of my grey colour, which is basically this colour here mixed with a little bit of Payne's grey and splattered that using this same brush. <laughs> Comes in handy this brush, it really does. Now this will be a video on my Patreon channel. So if you are interested in watching this and currently over 150 other video lessons on there as well. I'll pop a little link in the description down below for you. Don't forget that. And also don't forget to subscribe and also like this video. Because when you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, there's less chance of you missing my videos. Especially if you like them. I hope you do anyway. <laughs>